when Simon Peter came and he said, uh, Lord, the Pharisees are asking me, why don't you pay your temple tax? It wasn't the tax to Caesar. He said he paid his taxes. He, he, Jesus said, render, render. When they ask him, do you pay tax? Should we pay tax? He said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and render unto God what is God's. So take care of God. Take care of, of, of your taxes. But this was a reference, the one that when he comes, Peter comes to him and he says, uh, Lord, they're asking the Pharisees, the religious people, why don't you pay the temple tax? There was something called the temple tax. And if, listen, this is so important. When you turn 20 years of age, you had to pay something called a temple tax under the old covenant. It was half a shekel. And if you were 20 or above, you had to pay that. And Jesus said, you know, you're right, because we know that Jesus was 30 years of age. He was over 20. And then he turns to Simon Peter and he says, go uh, get a hook and go to the um, pier down there, the Sea of Galilee, and catch a fish. And when you open his mouth, there will be one shekel, which means it'll be, and he says these words, and pay the tax bill for me and for thee. He says that in, the, in that same chapter. He says, pay it for me and thee. What about the other 11 disciples? Why would they not need the money? They were totally dependent on Jesus for three and a half years. They had no side jobs. They had thrown away their fishing nets or whatever. They were only totally dependent upon Jesus' ministry, taking care of them. They owed it. Here's the reason why scholars believe that he didn't bother. He just paid the tax for himself. He was 30 years of age. Simon Peter was the second oldest. He was the only one we know that was married. He had a mother-in-law who had a fever, you remember, and Jesus healed it. So we know he was old enough to be married and have a family, but none of the other disciples, here's why, is because scholars believe that he didn't provide enough money for all of them because the rest of them were under 20 years of age. They were teenagers. And doesn't that make sense? Jesus is 30 years old. I'm sorry I'm messing up your picture of the Lord's Supper at home right now, but there was not a gray beard among them. He picked his own generation. He was 30 years old. He wasn't an old man. He was 30 years old. And he picked teenagers, probably in their late teens, and he said, I'm going to change the world, and I'm not going to get the old people to do it. I'm not going to get the experienced, matured people to do it. I know this is a rough bunch. I know this is a crazy bunch. I know I've got all kinds in this bunch, but I'm picking these 12, and they're young people. They're teenagers, and if I can get them to get around me, and I can shape them, and I can mold them, they can change the world. They can serve their own generation. I want to say to the young people that are under the sound of my voice, you have to serve your generation. And at some point, if you, if you, here's the secret to life. I mean, a real fulfilled life is get the thing off, get the spotlight off of you and begin to serve your generation. Find some way to help people. If you do it, it is the most rewarding thing. And amazingly, once your motive is right, the money will chase you. You won't have to be a beggar. You won't, you, you will, will be amazed as you start serving your generation. You'll have to carry heavy rocks. Don't get me wrong. You'll be under tremendous pressure. And at night, you'll go home and say, I feel spent. I'm about dead. This has about killed me. I can't take this, the pressure. When I think about the rocks that me and Sharice and the leaders of this church have had to carry, it's not, it's not about us, but my God, if you're trying to build something, you're going to have to do some heavy lifting. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you subscribe to our channel so that you can get notifications on new posts and live streams. Be sure to share this video with a friend. You never know how you can send the Word of God right when somebody needs to hear it. And you can use your social influence for good, for the glory of God. 
thanks again. Share it with a friend, and I really appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.